Baroness Schalke, Dr. Henschel, distinguished board members, distinguished scientists, partners and donors, ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly delighted to speak to you as you commemorate the 10th anniversary of the MMV. Before its birth, WHO and TDR play a very important role of a midwife in a gestation and discussion for about two years before we gave birth to MMV. And we in WHO are truly proud of the result. Let me congratulate you on your big birthday present. What is it? It's not champagne. It's not birthday cake. It's a recent multi million dollar grant announced by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. At a time of global economic downturn, this to me is an expression of respect. Respect for the significance of your achievements and of the confidence in your mission and business plan for the future. Good work sustains momentum, even in difficult times. Achievements earn support, even in difficult times especially when the need is so great and the effort so daring. The world is in a mess, ladies and gentlemen, with an economic recession on the one hand, a changing climate on the other, and an influenza pandemic spreading everywhere, as a matter of fact, to 200 countries now. But the desire to seek greater fairness in distributing the benefits of medical and scientific progress remains steadfast. Public health has long struggled to ensure that people do not die needlessly for want of access to existing interventions. MMV has had a higher ambition. People should not die for want of incentives to develop new products for diseases that almost exclusively affect the poor. This ambition becomes all the more important for a disease like malaria that has rapidly developed resistance to one class of anti-malarial compounds after another. Already we are hearing the rumblings of artemisinin resistance and the big storm that is likely to follow. We must stay ahead of the curve. What do I mean by that? We must stay ahead of the parasite. This need and your unique approach to meeting this need have been soundly endorsed. On this occasion, we are celebrating the power of innovation. We are celebrating the courage to do something conventional like drug discovery in a radically different way. We are celebrating what can be achieved when the unmet needs, unmet health needs of the poor become a legitimate and compelling incentive for drug discovery. From its outset, MMV has been a hard-nosed business venture with a compassionate humanitarian heart. You have demonstrated a smart use of market forces and competition to stimulate drug di discovery for a market that has very little commercial appeal. And you have demonstrated the power unleashed by a well-conceived, well-managed and forward-looking partnership. From its inception, MMV has been different in groundbreaking ways. For a long time, efforts to discover new drugs for disease of the poor were opportunistic in nature. They screened existing compounds, often licensed for veterinary use, hoping to discover activity against a human infective agent. This opportunistic approach brought us ivermectin for river blindness and later for lymphatic filariasis as well. It also ushered in an era of generous industry donations 
to fill the vacuum that donors, you know, like generous pharmaceutical industry. As I said, you know, the opportunistic approach brought us, you know, ivermectin for river blindness and for lymphatic filariasis. It also ushered in an era of generous industry donations to fill the vacuum that occurs when a new product becomes available. And those in need, numbers in the millions, and yet this huge market has no purchasing power. Industry donations, in turn, led to the strategy of mass preventive chemotherapy, an vastly simplified operational approach for combating several overlapping diseases together. Success increased the momentum and the elimination of several ancient and debilitating tropical diseases is now in sight for 2015.